Okay, now, thanks for staying with us. We're treating women, women with disabilities and climate change at this point. Women living with disabilities in Nigeria face both disability-related and gender-specific barriers, leading to multiple layers of marginalization. These challenges include limited access to education, healthcare, employment, and political participation. Inclusion efforts must focus on addressing overlapping discrimination to ensure equal rights and opportunities for women with disabilities. It's time now to take this opportunity to meet with some of them and uh, get first-hand um, information about what has really been happening and how they think government and the people of Nigeria can include them in, in all the scheme of affairs. So we have as our guest, um, Luis Auta, President Network of Women with Disabilities, joining us, and also Mrs. Ononwu Gift, a Communications and Media Officer for NWDDRF Project. Good morning, uh, ladies, and welcome to the program. Why can't yeah, I? Good morning, and thank you for having me. Okay. Welcome to the program. So let's begin with uh, the for having us. Yes, let's begin with the president. Uh, uh, what is what what informed uh, this discussion? Let me begin with that because uh, uh, all the things I was talking about, uh, what dis disabled people feel or uh, the face, may be alien to a lot of people. So give us first-hand information. What informed uh, the choosing of this topic to discuss? Yes, in most of the situations in Nigeria, women and girls with disabilities are triple jeopardized. First as a woman, secondly as a woman with disability, and lastly, the barriers that she faces. These barriers could be infrastructural, it could be medical, it could be attitudinal, institutional, and all sorts of barriers that women and girls with disabilities are facing. For us in Nigeria, how do we have access to quality health services, education, information, as well as safe drinking water, clean air, good nutrition, quality housing, decent working and environmental conditions and freedom from discrimination how my health my rights as a woman with disability and because of the systemic and persistent health inequities women and girls with disabilities face the disproportionate risk of dying much earlier as much as 20 years earlier than others. Hmm. Okay. As we speak, yeah. last week we buried one of our members. This week we are burying another one due to issues of poverty and other factors of climate change. So we need to prioritize issues of women and girls with disabilities when it comes to climate change. Flooding took place in Medjugorje a few weeks ago, and it affected some of our members. How did we reach out to them? How did we support them? How did we enable an enable an enabling environment for women and girls with disabilities? These are sensitive questions that government, private sector, and other duty bearers, gatekeepers, and critical stakeholders need to start having conversation with because we are the mostly affected when it comes to issues of climate change. Mm. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay. Let, let me go to a gift now. A, I don't know. Some of the things mentioned are not even peculiar to the people living with disabilities because working environment uh, uh, and other hazards that we face, even in the Borno State um, disaster, a lot of people who are not living with disabilities were um, also affected. But 
you, you know, do we have particular instances, do we have things that are missing particularly that should have been done to make sure some of these ones, because, okay, yes, we accept the fact that if you are living with disabilities, there are so many restrictions to the kind of things that you can do. We, we know that. But what is really missing, because we thought there are laws, Everybody thinks that there are laws uh, to guard against a lot of things that are being mentioned here uh, by the president. Okay, so what, what, why are these laws not implemented? But if, or if they are implemented, why is it not having any effect on the people living with disabilities? Okay, good morning once again. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I think we have a lot of laws that are already um in existence but these laws are not capturing the needs of persons with disabilities when it comes to climate change um we are the people that are being affected by climate change we are the ones we are in the shoes we know where it pinches us but once we are not included in making these laws that means we are excluded that means they don't really know where it pinches us that means our our, our needs are not expressed so these laws are not being implemented because persons with disabilities are not captured their needs are not captured okay take for instance um access to resources we we'll have limited access to relief materials distributions of food like um, clean water, medical supplies, these are not considered for persons with disability, especially women with disability. Physical access to our resources is frequently restricted. And this can also increase poverty. Women with disabilities, we are facing um, poverty in underdeveloped world and uh, we live in urgent poverty here. Most of us cannot afford food. And when it comes to um, climate change effects, a, a blind woman cannot even know her way to go and get, a, a get food for her family when it has to do with climate change effects. Okay, when you talk about um, um, a, a person with abnism, these are persons that climate change has effect on. A person with abnism needs uh, 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 um, a sunscreen. It, it needs a weather that can be friendly to her skin. And once there is climate change, you find out that these people are being affected and their needs are not included in these um, constitutions or policies that has to do with women with disability. So we are totally left out because we are not included in decision-making policies. Thank you. Yeah, so well, uh, let's go back to the president now. If you say, like uh, Gift has just mentioned, if you say uh, being included in decision-making, uh, what do you mean? I, I cannot rule out the fact, I cannot say that if you go to the in National Assembly, there is no one individual that is living with a form of disability or the other. I can't see that happening. I'm sure one person or, or so will be living with disabilities and so can talk for the people. So but when you talk about inclusion, uh, what do you really mean? Well, how do you want that action, that affirmative action to be taken and not just left to uh, the fact that maybe somebody will win an election who is living with disability? How can you be included in the decision-making process? Yes, we, we need to start taking deliberate actions in ensuring that persons with disabilities, especially women, are included in the decision-making processes from the federal level to the local level. Is it affirmative action? Is it quota system? Is it a representative model that we need to have? We need to make it a constitutional right that, yes, one woman with disability from each state 
has the opportunity to be a member of the parliament from the national level to the local level. Aside doing that, we also need to encourage persons with disabilities, especially women and girls with disabilities who are highly excluded, sidelined and underrepresented to know their rights as citizens. What are their civic rights? The right to vote and the right to be voted for according to Article 29 of the United Nations Convention on the Right of Persons with Disabilities and Section 30 of Nigerian Disability Act. Women and girls with disabilities need to start getting into political parties as active members so that when you want to pick up a form, nobody will challenge you. Where were you four years ago? Where were you 10 years ago? Let, let, me, let, me, get let, me, let me get this straight, systems. Louis. Let me get this straight, Louis. Um, we've been talking about yeah. women with disabilities. Uh, I know that is the focus now, but the, the question is, uh, do the women with disabilities have um, challenges that are different from the men with disabilities? Because if you're advocating inclusion or involvement of these people with disabilities, well, it's, we seem not to be even uh, thinking about men as well. Are you saying the women should go in, in a representative capacity to stand for both? Or uh, why are we mentioning only women? Yes, because we have a number of peculiarities. Our needs and challenges are different. If you listen to my opening statement, I mentioned how women and girls with disabilities are triple jeopardized as a woman, as a woman with disability, and the barriers that we face, which could be patriarchal systems, culture, traditions, infrastructure, poverty, medical issues, and so many problems that women and girls with disabilities are facing. In this African context, we have a country that has 61% of women participation. In Nigeria, we have only 3 plus percent. It's not even up to 4% participation of women with disabilities in the decision-making process. Where are we going? For women with disabilities, it's a 0% level of participation. From the federal level, to the state level, to the local go government level, we are not represented. And we want to say it is our right to participate. And it is our time to move from exclusion to segregation to integration and to inclusion and now from my own insight i want to say it is time that we begin to move from inclusion to participation and from participation to representation when we are represented in the decision making processes we will be able to say okay 10 percent all 20% is reserved for women with disabilities to attend COP29. We'll be able to say economic opportunities should be given to women with disabilities at 20% level. I know the Disability Act requested for 5%, but for us to ensure inclusivity to the highest level, we need to increase that number. What is the 5% five five net? Right now, is the 5% yeah, five five quota met at this point? No, 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 no. Not even up to 1% yet. Oh, okay. Let me go to give. Banking halls, <clears throat> banking halls are still not accessible. School facilities are not accessible. Health facilities are not accessible. It's so sad that when a woman with hearing impairment visits a hospital, it takes the grace of God to communicate between the patient with hearing impairment and the medical practitioner due to 
inaccessibility of information and communication materials. No sign language interpreter, interpreter no large formats, no material to be able to read and say, yes, this is the solution to my challenge. So it is time that Nigeria begin to be jealous of her country and say, yes, we want to be inclusive. We want to ensure every society, every community is okay. inclusive and accessible as much as we can. Okay. Thank you. So now, as we let me go to gift. Gift now, um, as a communication expert or, or communication officer, um, um, I want to know the level of orientation you have with the people themselves, the the women themselves that live with disability, because a lot of people will say, while the government on their part it may not be doing enough, while the, the society may not be doing enough uh, to make sure that people living with disabilities are included, maybe on the part of the people living with disabilities also, they need to be talked to. Uh, what are areas do you have identified? For instance, if it comes to elective positions, it will be difficult to just allot uh, councillorship and say, because you are living with disability, come and take it and all that. But what effort does uh, the people themselves, or what effort do, do they do put in, in, into uh, action as well? So. How much do they participate? How much do they put themselves forward before seeing that, okay, there's a stumbling block and they cannot do what they're supposed to do? Does, um, does the entire blame belong to the federal government or the society and nothing to the people themselves that live with disability? And if they have a blame, what do you think they can do to put themselves also out there in front? Okay, um, thank you very much. Okay, prior to this time, we have been having series of meetings on um, climate change, and these involve women with disability of the cis plus plus, um, the blind, the deaf, uh, women with abilism, physical challenge, and all that. And in this training, all we have been hearing from them is the way um, climate change has been affecting them and we go on to train them on possible ways to um, to mitigate the effect of climate change on them. Now, women with disabilities, what we teach them is now in your own part, in your own area, what you can do to uh, for yourself to be able to reduce the effect of um, climate change. As a woman with physically challenged as I am, I'm a woman with um, physical disability, I have to stay away from um, things that can make me to easily fall. I have to be careful of my environment. I have to monitor the places I go to. Now, when there, where there is um, a, a risk of fire outbreak, I won't, I won't expose myself in such environment because I know if I'm to run, I know my, 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 my ability of running and a person that is not with disability can run more than me. So in this area, I have to do my own part by staying away from things that can um, increase or that can spark a climate change effect on me. Now, for a person with uh, abnesia, what you have to do will teach them to have a sunscreen. When you are working under the sun, you have to use your sunscreen. When there is um, when you are making use of generator, you make sure your generator is is being fed away from your house, where there will be no um smoke uh, yeah, interruption yeah, that, in your that, house. And beyond that, these are the things. Beyond that, it, we know the impact of climate change is on everybody, but more on the people living with disabilities. Uh, our, our concern now is that some of these things that happen to us, if we had a good policy, uh, the effect at least will be like everybody else who may not even have disabilities will be facing the same thing. But right now, it is more on the people with disabilities. So how much do you put out there for, uh, in, in terms of orientation for your people to try to also be a part of this policy making bodies 
Because when it comes to election, is it enough for the person living with disability to just say, because I'm living with disability, I cannot contest? Have you been also drumming it into them how they have equal opportunities and they should try to do this? Does it, does it also form part of the curriculum, so to speak, uh, when you are educating your people uh, about how to become relevant, how to, be to join the people who make the policies and all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I must say that despite our challenges or conditions that persons with disability, women with disability are the strongest. And this um, effect of climate change or whatever has not made us to relate in, our, in any position. I see women with disability pushing for, for elections, for positions in office and all that. And um, we are resilient. And th that is a very good um factor in, in the lives of persons with disability, we are resilient and we keep in, in sensitizing women, creating awareness on how to push, on how to to take charge in the community because um, women with disabilities are not represented at all. So we have to represent ourselves by coming out to vote and to be voted for, picking up our rights and um, Okay. Seeing that we are included. Okay. Uh, Louis, Louis, now, um, some political parties, not all of them, some political parties have made it so easy, or at least easier for the women than men. I'm not even talking about women with disabilities, but I'm talking about for the women. Some political parties give forms to the women free of charge. Some political parties give forms. Uh, expression of interest and all that to women at half the price that men will have to pay uh, so uh, well that's not marginalization when it comes to that if it was the other way around the women will crack but what else what extra move can political parties for instance do uh, so that it will give to the women living with disabilities that uh, necessary incentive to be able to go and compete for elective positions because it's in those elective positions that people make the policies that affect the people living with disabilities. And the more represented uh, you are in those bodies, the better, or the, yeah, the better the policies that will also cover the people living with disabilities. So what else do you think political parties, first of all, can do to make sure that you be in the corridors of power? Yes, political parties need to start taking actions by making sure they are inclusive and accessible to the community of persons with disabilities, especially women and girls with disabilities who are excluded already from the system. So one, we need DEX officers who are women and girls with disabilities and political parties to be able to amplify our voices and our, and our rights for participation when okay. it comes to politics. Then number two, we need to review our constitution and reserve a space, mm. a space for women and girls with disabilities to be represented. Mm. If Kenya will achieve that, we have Senator Crystal Asigi, a 33 young woman who is visually impaired in Kenyan's parliament. So what is Nigeria doing? Are we jokers? Okay. What are we doing to make sure that women and girls with disabilities are given their right to political participation? Number three, we need to encourage women with disabilities to participate. When a woman with disabilities come out to aspire, we should encourage her. It's not just by expression of interest form and the nomination form being given for free. It's more than that. They can give you those forms and they go to sleep. We want to see more of making sure that our rights are given to us. Okay. What about 
appointments okay from the federal to the local level yeah, that's how helpful. are women with disabilities being appointed these are issues we okay. need to be deliberate about okay thank you uh, well uh, we do hope that um, uh, we can continue to we will continue to not even hoping we will continue to uh, drum it in the ears of those who are concerned so that the needful can be done uh, we do hope that uh, the implementation of these laws and uh, the requirements by the United Nations and every other body that uh, caters to the need of uh, the people living with disabilities, uh, Nigeria, Niger, excuse me, Nigeria will, will look uh, critically into it and do something about it. We hope for a better society. We hope for a society where everybody will be carried along. Unfortunately, for this particular day, this is where we have to drop it. We'll continue talking and advocating as much as we can. We'd like to thank you, um, Gift okay. and uh, Louis, for coming on the program. Thank okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we were looking at um, climate change and women in, with, living with disabilities and what the challenges are for them. And they're asking relevant authorities, stakeholders, to make sure that women living with disabilities, and in fact, all the people living with disabilities are encouraged to be more. Uh, and everything that they're supposed to be provided for, or be provided rather, uh, to make their life easier should be provided by those in authority and those who are concerned. We'll take a short break and when we return, we'll be talking about the health of the eyes, so to speak. Stay with us. <laughs>